This is gonna be your new favorite fried chicken. It's pretty much combines everything that made me who I am and where I am in right now and where I live in Asheville, North Carolina here in the South. All comes together for me in this dish in a way that's, I, I can't even describe. I mean, I, I've literally got goosebumps. You can see my hair standing in end uh, from the feeling that this chicken has given me. Hi everybody, Marwan Ronnie again, and I'm here to talk to you about all things Parsi. And if you're wondering what a Parsi is, you're looking at one. Parsis are a small tribe of Persians that left Persia back then, oh, give about a thousand years ago, and moved to India, settled there, and formed this unique community, and developed a style of cuisine that's become renowned throughout the world. Opportunities to try our food are far and few in between, so you have no idea how lucky you are that I'm making some Parsi food for you all today, and also particularly lucky because it's absolutely delicious. So one of the dishes I'm gonna to make today is called chicken facha, fried chicken, Parsi style. And we're here in the South, and I love bringing my Indian tradition and my Indo-Persian tradition to the South where I live and mash them all together into deliciousness. Anybody that loves fried chicken will love this dish even more. And if you love this video, subscribe below and you can watch me make two other fantastic dishes. Green banana cutlets, absolutely delicious, delicate, makes a great appetizer. And then we've got the legendary Kima Pao, AKA the Sloppy Jai. Let's do this. So first I'm gonna show you how to make the marinade for the chicken. And this is where all that flavor is gonna come from and it's gonna tenderize the chicken and just make it Fantastic. Now, when you see it at chili, it's not just the seeds that have the heat, it's actually the pit that the seeds are attached to where the heat is. So, we got two of them seeded and pitted, technical term. Four to five medium sized cloves of garlic, and I've got about an equivalent amount of ginger. A few sprigs of cilantro, stems and all. We're gonna put some roasted cumin powder. If you caught my video on my green banana cutlets, I showed you guys how to toast cumin seeds and grind them up in a little coffee grinder. I can't tell you how important a culinary step this is if you're gonna be working with spices. However, you don't have the time to do that. There are a handful of companies that are selling now roasted and ground spices. Nothing at the end of the day changes the dish or an ingredient from one culture to another to another from all of the world except for the way the dish is spiced and seasoned. And that's why you really want to take care of your spices, treat them well, and essentially work with them and get to know them. We're going to add a healthy pinch of salt. A little bit of turmeric powder goes a long way, so you don't want to ever go heavy on the turmeric. And an equivalent amount of Kashmir chili powder. Kashmir chili powder is the chili powder that I like. If you don't have Kashmir chili powder, cayenne's fine. But if anything, I'd use a little bit less cayenne. We're only going to use a half a lime. So we don't want to put too much liquid in here because we don't want this to become runny. Kind of want a thick paste so that it coats the chicken well. It's easier to add than to take away. Cooking is part art form, part science, part just experience. We're working with natural ingredients, so learning how to be able to adjust in the fly is just an important part. It comes from experience. The more you cook, the more you learn how to work with the ingredients. So, chunky, not runny. All right, let's talk chicken. I'm using skinless, boneless Thai meat. And Indians, we love dark meat. The other thing that I highly recommend keeping in your house is a box of gloves. Because when it comes to marinating and rubbing and getting your hands in, it just makes cleanup so much easier. And now, stick this in the fridge for a minimum of 30 minutes, but no more than five or six hours. It's very different from a brine, because you have a lot of salt dissolved in the water, and that's getting absorbed into the chicken. But with this kind of a marinade, that kind of absorption is not quite happening. You're just coating it well and letting it tenderize a little bit without going too far. While that chicken's marinating, let's talk about frying in oil. I like pan frying my chicken in a cast iron skillet. When I got here and first discovered chicken fried in a cast iron skillet, there was no other way I was gonna do my fried chicken. Second most important thing when frying is making sure that your oil is hot enough. What hot oil does is it essentially immediately crisps the outside, creating a barrier that allows what's inside to cook and steam and heat without all that oil penetrating all the way in and making what you're eating ultra greasy. In fact, when something's been fried really well and exceptionally well by somebody who knows what they're doing, it's not greasy. The best way to check the temperature is to use one of these suckers, a hot oil temperature gauge. And you just want to make sure you get this oil up to about 325. I should, really, honey, we really need to get one of those smaller ones. <laughs> this thing's kind of ridiculous. It'll get the job done. Okay, so I'm gonna put that in there in a second. Let's get the rest of our ingredients. So I'm not gonna put a lot of spices in the flour. We've got so much flavor in the chicken, we don't want to overpower it. And our eggs. 
Just two eggs is enough because we've only got four kinds of chicken and this is plenty. So we're gonna whisk this pretty well because we actually want a nice fluffy aerated action when we do the chicken in here. Yeah, see that? It's ready. So we're gonna go from the chicken to the flour to the egg to the pan. It's like a runway of chicken going straight to delicious. <laughs> chicken runway. All right, chicken runway. Let's get a beautiful juicy piece here. Oh, this is gonna be so good. Dredge it in the flour and then stick it in the egg and stick it in the other way. Drip some of the egg off and lay it in the pan. Hold it there for a second. Let it start frying and then gently lay it away from you. Don't drop it down. You don't want that oil just splattering up and hitting you all over the face, right? I'm gonna move quickly with these other pieces so we can get them all cooking at more or less the same rate. With a ladle, as the chicken's frying, go ahead and grab some oil and pour it over the top. And you see how it's sizzling? We're just helping it fry along the top also. And we use this heat from above technique in a fair amount of Indian dishes, one of the most famous being biryani. We pile the top of the lid with coals also so that the heat's coming out from both sides. Because we're pan frying, a nice slotted spatula is perfect. If you don't have one of these in the kitchen, get one. They're extremely, extremely, extremely useful. In one of my other uh, videos, you guys saw me use the double spatula technique here for flipping. We don't, I don't want to just flip this over into the oil because it may splatter and the oil go everywhere. So what you do is use a second spatula to hold it down, flip it over, and then let it slide off gently down there. Voila! A really nice thing about working also with the uh, chicken pie that's been deboned is that it's a skinnier piece of meat. I know that the inside's gonna be juicy and not have to worry about it being raw if you have a thicker piece of meat like a breast. But it's always better safe than sorry. Keep a instant read thermometer that you can pierce the meat with just to double check and make sure you're not eating raw chicken. We're gonna grab a chicken out and put it on a drip tray. And if you've got a second batch that you're gonna be working on, this is a perfectly fine time to keep the oven on, 200 degrees, 250, and let the chicken hang out of there. And it's gonna stay perfectly juicy and not dry because we're just keeping there for a little bit of time. Behold, beautiful chicken vodka. So what better to go with a nice fried chicken than a slaw? I'm just gonna make a classic cabbage slaw, but instead of a mayo-based dressing for the slaw, we're gonna go with a vinegar-based dressing because I think the acidity of that will perfectly complement the chicken. So super simple, just shredded cabbage and shredded carrots. We're gonna hit this with a little bit of salt and we're gonna hit this with a little bit of sugar. And then we're gonna hit this with some lime juice. And then to really get some awesome flavor in here, I'm gonna use a barrel aged maple vinegar. So something fun like that. Rice vine vinegar is a great substitute. And then let this hang out. I'd recommend doing this before you start frying the chicken. And by the time you're done with the marinade and the chicken and the frying and everything like that, your slaw will have set and the flavor from the vinegar and the salt and the sugar will just taste delicious in there. And this will make a delicious accoutrement to go with your beautiful fried chicken. All right, time to dig in. See how good I really am. This chicken farsha, even though it's a traditional Farsi dish, probably the only time I would ever get it is either at a restaurant or at a wedding or a fancy occasion. Just the idea of eating this is flooding back memories of being in India and being a kid and trying to finagle that extra piece of chicken. And oh, I, can't, I gotta stop talking, I just gotta eat this thing. First of all, it's done perfectly. This is the nice thing about chicken thigh. It's always gonna be done perfectly. Wow, this is gonna be your new favorite fried chicken. Oh, that slaw just took it up to an 11. You've got this beautiful layer of flavor that you can see between the egg and the chicken. That's all that ginger and garlic and green chilies and herbs that we put in there. Indian food, it's complex, but it's not necessarily complicated. This is a very special, very special, very close and dear to my heart piece of Indian cuisine, Parsi cuisine. This is who I am. This is my heritage. It's pretty much combines everything that made me who I am and where I am in right now and where I live in Asheville, North Carolina, here in the South, all comes together for me in this dish in a way that's, I, I can't even describe. I mean, I, I've literally got goosebumps. You can see my hair standing in end uh, from the feeling that this chicken has given me. So I didn't mean for this to be an emotional moment here <laughs> on this YouTube channel, but that's what food can do. It can instantly transport you and connect you back to where everything began and where things came from. And this is taking me back right to my home where I came from and puts me right where I am right now in my home today. Please try this at home. Tell me in the comments below how you make your chicken farsha, your parsley fried chicken. And if you like this, subscribe and you can see me do green banana cutlets and kima pao. Thanks for joining and remember always, good thoughts, good words, good deeds, good food. Bye. I gotta get it for some more.
Mm. Mm. That was so good. Mm. <laughs>